we continue reading through the Electrical Safety Student Manual. Wet conditions hazards. Working in wet conditions is hazardous because you may become an easy path for electrical current. If you touch a live wire or other electrical component and you are standing in even a small puddle of water, you will receive a shock. Well, even if it's not a small puddle of water, you will also receive a shock. It's just that the water on the ground connected to your shoes or if your hand is wet causes your resistance to be lower and lower resistance means higher current so the shock you receive will be more severe <coughs> damage insulation equipment or tools can expose you to live electrical parts a damaged tool may not be grounded properly so the housing of the tool may be energized causing you to receive a shock right? improperly grounded metal switch plates and the ceiling lights are especially hazardous in wet conditions if you touch a live electrical component with an uninsulated hand tool you may you are more likely to receive a shock when standing in water but remember you don't have to be standing in water to be electrocuted wet clothing high humidity and perspiration reduces resistance and increases your chance of being electrocuted you need to recognize that all wet conditions are hazards are hazards an electrical circuit in a damp place without a GFCI is dangerous a GFCI reduces the danger there are non electrical hazards at job sites too additional hazards in addition to electrical hazard other types of hazards are present at job sites remember that all of these hazards can be controlled there may be chemical hazard solvents and other substances may be poisonous or cause disease solvents and other substances may be poisonous or cause disease frequent overhead work can be tendinitis or inflammation in your in your shoulders overhead work can cause long-term shoulder pain as in this case intensive use of muscle intensive use of hand tools that involve force or twisting can cause tendinitis of the hands wrists or elbow use of hand tools can also cause carpal tunnel syndrome which results with nerves in the wrist when nerves in the wrist are damaged by swelling tendons or contracting muscles in that case the contracting muscles press on the nerves and you have tingling and numbness in the hands frequent use of some hand tools can cause wrist problems such as carpal tunnel syndrome this is a case a 22 year old carpenter's apprentice was killed when he was struck in the head by a nail fired from a powered activated nail gun a device that uses a gun powder cartridge to drive nails into concrete or steel the nail gun operator fired the gun while attempting an anchor to anchor a plywood concrete form causing the nail to pass through the hollow form the nail traveled 27 feet before striking the victim the nail gun operator had never received training on how to use 
the tool and none of the employees in the area were working PPE. In another situation, two workers were building a wall while renovating a house. One of the workers was killed when he was struck by a nail fired from a powered activated nail gun. The tool operator who fired the nail was trying to attach a piece of plywood to a wooden strut, but the nail shot through the plywood and stood, striking the victim. Below are some OSHA guide regulations that should have been followed. Employees using power or pressure activated tools must be trained to use them safely. Employees who operate powder, well, let me read this part again. Employees using powder or pressure activated tools must be trained to use them safely. Employees who operate powder or pressure activated tools must be trained to avoid firing into easily penetrated materials like plywood. In areas where workers could be exposed to flying nails, appropriate PPE must be used. PPE, personal protective equipment such as eye protection, hard hat, special clothing, etc. Lift with your legs, not with your back. So this is improper lifting technique. Low back pain can result from lifting objects the wrong way or carrying heavy objects or wire of or of carrying heavy loads of wire or other material. Back pain can also occur as a result of injury from poor working surfaces such as wet or slippery floors. Back pain is common, but it can be disabling and can affect young individuals. Chips and particles flying from tools can injure your eye. Wear eye protection. Falling objects can hit you. Wear a hard hat. Sharp objects and power equipment can cause cuts or other injuries. If you receive a shock, you may react and be hurt by a tool. You can be injured or killed by falling from a ladder or scaffolding. If you receive a shock, even a mild one, you may lose your balance and fall. Even without being shocked, you could fall from a ladder or scaffolding. So if you're on a ladder and receive a shock, you may jump due to the shock and that jump can cause you to fall. You expose yourself to hazards when you do not wear PPE. All of these situations need to be recognized as hazards. So you need to be especially careful when working on a scaffolding or ladders. Summary of Section 5 You need to be able to recognize that electrical shocks, fires or falls result from these hazards. They include inadequate wiring, exposed electrical parts, overhead power lines, defective insulation, improper grounding, overload currents, wet conditions, damaged tools and equipment, improper PPE. So inadequate wiring, you have the, the wrong size wire, wire too small and it overheats or it could be a violation of the color code causing one to assume that a wire is neutral when it is really live although you should not make assumptions here you should test to confirm exposed electrical parts it could be exposed live parts overhead power lines be careful to examine and keep an eye up there to make sure that any ladder or tall objects that you are using do not contact the overhead power lines. Defective insulation, you should have proper protection from the insulation to prevent you being shocked. In, there should be no cracks or stripping of the insulation. Improper grounding, 
equipment should be grounded properly and the ground plug should not be removed or the, the ground section of the plug should not be removed overloaded circuits to ensure that too much high power appliances too many high power appliances are not connected to this, the circuit wet conditions be very careful when it is wet preferably try to work try to avoid working during wet conditions damaged tools and equipment these should not be used they should be repaired and improper PPE you must always wear your proper personal protective equipment when working section 6 safety model stage 2 evaluating hazards we will leave section 6 for a different video